Hi skincare lovelies, let's talk about our daytime recipe for melasma control. So uh, where do we start cleanser and is the cleansing step important? It's super important because it's how we start our recipe. So if our cleanser is going to be irritating the barrier, say it hasn't had any physical exfoliate, that's irritation to the barrier. Any irritation in a melasma or pigmentation prone skin is going to offset inflammation and compound the pigmentation. So your cleanser step must be a super gentle step. You could use a chemical exfoliant and chemical exfoliants include ingredients for example glycolic acid and these are wonderful if you can shield from the sun uh, but a nice place to start I think even before glycolic acid is with something called a polyhydroxy acid. Now polyhydroxy acid has in it all the meaningful benefits so the exfoliating properties of an alpha hydroxy acid but without the irritation because of the way the molecule is formulated it's a lot gentler in its release its delivery to the skin but will say, still give you that pigment lifting uh, capacity then from cleansing step you're going to go on to a layer in terms of viscosity of products so always remember that that's key so our next step would be our serums now what do we want our serums to do for us if our skin is pigmentation prone first step is we want an antioxidant serum if we're going to layer what does the antioxidant serum do? Super simple. It's decreasing or halting the progression of reactive oxygen species and the drama or the damage they offset in the skin. So where do we get that reactive oxygen species generation from? That's from environmental aggressors toxin, smoke, pollution, and that's particularly important if you live in an area where there's a high pollution index. So cities, for example, you really need an antioxidant for your shielding. Um, two antioxidants I really like are one, the Floritin antioxidant has in it a vitamin C, aliscorbic, together with Floritin, which is a pigment regulating molecule. Uh, and the other one I find particularly helpful is the Neostrata C, and that again has an effective aliscorbic, but buffered in a polyhydroxy acid. So a very gentle release, especially for people who find it tricky or challenging uh, with application of a vitamin C and aliscorbic to the skin because it can cause a little bit of sensitivity when first you introduce. So we've got in our serum, we're going to allow that to sit a little while on the skin. Uh, so to face and neck for application, please. Uh, so maybe you want to go dress, come back, and then you're going to get on your moisturizer. Now, a moisturizer can just be a moisturizer you're comfortable with. Alternatively, your moisturizer can also be a pigment correcting step. So an ingredient that may be helpful for you is something called thiamidol. And this blocks the tyrosinase in uh, enzyme in the skin and tyrosinase is an enzyme that promotes pigmentation so you're blocking that progression of pigment stimulation in the skin you've laid on your moisturizer maybe you want to go have a cup of coffee come back and then it's sunscreen because if you apply your sunscreen too close to a moisturizer you get almost this emulsification of product moisturizer sunscreen and the skin can look a little bit sheeny or shiny so I'd let a little bit of time pass and then sunscreen. Now sunscreen, you want to be mindful, not just application on the daily, and daily is important, even if you're indoors, but also amount. So let's touch on why apply sunscreen, even if you're indoors. So the first part of it is UVA visible light is happily coming through a window pane. So even indoor days, days you're driving, it's happily coming through a sunscreen, uh, that UVA visible light, so you must shield up on a daily as a principle, just so you have comprehensive protection. Then from there, you want a filter that's effective. So what does this mean? When you're reading your sunscreen label, how do you decipher it? SPF is just the UVB cover. So ideally you want an SPF of 30 or more. I always try to advocate for a 50 plus because if pigmentation is your concern, you want to try and protect as meaningfully as possible. And from there, you want to look to UVA cover. So you're going to look for that in particular on your sunscreen description. Um, and aside from that, you want visible light protection. So visible light are usually your physical sunscreen protectors. And these are ingredients like zinc, iron, or titanium oxide you're looking for on your ingredient list. Uh, and then, you want to think about the amount of sunscreen you're applying. So why is amount important? Say you came to me with an infection and I gave you an antibiotic and you decided, okay, I'm just gonna take a quarter of this antibiotic. The infection is not clearing. 
similar principle with the sunscreen. If you want it to shield you effectively, you have to get on adequate dosage. So what does adequate dosage mean? That is two finger lengths at least on the face. And when you're using those two finger lengths, I'd break them up into small amounts whilst you're applying to make up the two finger lengths. Again, so it doesn't look heavy, oily, shiny on your skin. I've put out two sunscreens for you today. The one is a physical filter, and that's the HelioCare Mineral Tolerance. So that's visible light protection. And visible light protection, super important in people with higher skin tones, so deeper skin tones. Why? Because visible light drives a longer, more deep-seated pigmentation uh, in people with higher skin tones. Second one I've show, I'm showing you is from Istin, which is their fusion water. And the reason I like this sunscreen is it goes on all skin tones and it doesn't leave a cast. So a cast is sometimes uh, something we're super mindful about with the deeper skin tone. So you'll see, I'll work that in and we don't see that gray tone sitting on top of the skin. Uh, so that's the fusion water. And my patients really like this one. And then apart from that, you want to remember sunscreen is not just a once off if you're outdoors. So an indoor day, you're okay. But if you're outdoors, you're taking a stroll, lunchtime, um, or you're having a bit of a drive some point in the day, maybe you're picking up the kids, uh, maybe you drive home and on the commute home, get quite a bit of sun, reapplication so important because sunscreen doesn't last the entire day as you perspire it's coming away so sunscreen reapplication can be a little bit tricky when it comes to application over makeup and so i find things like a sunscreen brush application really helpful and here you just dust off the sunscreen powder and this usually has physical filter sunscreen zinc iron oxide and then you can um, brush that on again a measure of protection for yourself now, apart from that, you can also have your sunscreen in the form of oral capsules. And how does it work? So it's super neat. Basically, when you use your sunscreen together with a sunscreen capsule, and I have out here uh, the HelioCare ones, they work synergistically, which means they work together. So you can't decide, all right, I'm just doing my capsule today, not my sunscreen. You have to use them together. And how the sunscreen capsules work, both from safety and clinical efficacy studies, is they heighten minimal erythema dose. So that's how your sunscreen works. By heightening minimal erythema dose, or MED, you decrease skin sensitivity to the sun. So you're photoprotecting or you're shielding up more effectively. So I take one a day myself because I'm also pigment prone. I also have melasma. But on days I'm going to be outdoors, I'll do one in the morning and one midday. So I'm super protected. Last part is, in terms of elegance of application, you may be looking for a CC cream or a color correcting cream. And the one I like is from SPR, especially their medium tone goes on the higher skin tones or the deeper skin tones. Um, more elegantly. And what a color correcting cream does is it evens out the skin tone while you're working for your skincare products to work so that it's regulated more even. So it just gives you a degree of camouflage. Uh, so you're feeling more comfortable about what your skin is looking like. Uh, and in this SVR cream that I like, the CC cream, it has in a built-in sun protection. So I find that helpful as well. I hope you found this recipe helpful, meaningful to you practically. It's a safe regime, it's an easy regime to follow. If you have any comments or any thoughts around, please leave in the comment section below. Please remember, if you've liked the content, like, subscribe, follow. If you have any further queries, please feel free to contact us at the Dermatology Room. Take care, skincare lovelies.